Hello guys, Wim from the future here. I just want to say that the entire project for this tutorial is available on our Patreon. So this is the final result. So you can type in a name like ha ha ha. You can then select regular profile pictures and you can see some profile pictures that have these requirements such as level or achievements. Some are moderator only. You can then select a profile picture and become that. You can then upgrade your levels. This one requires level 15. So we can do here level 18 and save. Now we are level 18. This picture become available to us. We can also have an achievement. So this one requires the festive achievement which is achievement number three if we save and edit we have that one this one is unlocked and then we become a moderator by signing a moderator id and if we do that all of the moderator pictures become available to us so guys if you're interested in directly downloading this from our patreon then check out the link in the description and enjoy the rest of the video hello guys welcome back to part two of the profile picture tutorial in which i explain how you can populate a panel with profile pictures and have certain profile pictures have requirements attached to them before you can actually unlock them what we're going to talk about in this video is that we're basically going to continue so right now we populated the profile pictures dynamically into this profile picture panel and as you see some of them don't show tooltips so these are default profile pictures i can basically just click them in a little bit and then equip them to my own user profile but some of them have a little tooltip and they display that for example this one special picture 6 requires level 15 to unlock and uh, special picture 8 requires the festive achievement in order to unlock it. So what we are going to do in this video is that we are going to take a look at how we can uh, meet these requirements for these pictures and if the player meets the requirements he will be able to select them and save them and equip them in their user profile but if the player does not meet the requirements we're basically going to gray these pictures out simply only show this tooltip and then basically communicate that way that you do not meet the requirements and that you can't use these profile pictures you do not have them unlocked essentially. So let's get to that. The first thing that we're going to need to do is make sure that we uh, can actually click one of these widgets and display them as our user profiles. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a little user profile with a, a name and a, and a profile picture that displays essentially. So what we are going to do for this example is we are instead of going to use some service like PlayFop to store our stuff on an online data table, we are going to be storing our stuff in a local save file and that's essentially the same. It's the, it's the same type of concept. So the first thing that we need to do is that I'm going to create a folder and call it save game. Games, actually, save games. And then we are going to create ourselves a structure which we want to call user profile. So we are going to go to blueprint structure, type in S underscore. The S stands for structure, user profile. And inside of the user profile, we want to have a couple of variables, a couple of different data, basically. First one that we want is the user name. So let's make this a string. And the next one that we want is our profile picture. So profile pick, and this is going to be of the type texture 2D. Texture 2D, just like this. Uh, and then, yeah, you might want to have a more uh, ex expanded user profile. So I don't know what you want to add here. Maybe a level. Let's do a level for this example. So let's make it an integer type because levels are probably whole numbers. And let's call this the user level. So we could do this like this. But now that I think about it, we also want to include achievements, right? So we want to have the user have a level and we want to have the user have achievements. And you could have multiple achievements. So the user can be one level. The user could, for example, be level zero or level 15, but the user can have multiple achievements. So for the achievements, we're going to do uh, user underscore achievements. And then let's do the same here. Let's call it user underscore level. And the achievements we're just gonna make out of the string type and we're gonna make it an array. So this is essentially your array of achievements and this is going to be your achievement ids so this will be based on id so let's say that you have achievement one two and three then in the previous video we learned if we take a look over here we learned that we gave achievements an id like this so we got achievement one two and three and these are their assigned ids so we can say that this user has unlocked right now achievement one two and three so that's why we store this as a string array. That's a nice way to store this. So let's get back to it. Um, now we want basically uh, uh, to save our 
the user profile inside of a save game and that's our way to access it. And yeah, you might want to change that out to something like PlayFab or Steam, remote cloud storage, for example. So what we are going to do is click on blueprint class and make ourselves a save game. Boom. And this is going to call BP user profile, but let's call it BP SG, which stands for save game underscore user profile. And what we're going to save in this, in this save game is over here, a variable off of the type user profile. And then this is going to be the user profile type compile and save. So right now under user profile, we store the user's level. We also store the achievements. Typically in games, you see that you have a profile and then maybe you have character stats. So instead of saving your level under a profile, you could also make yourself a separate extra structure in here that you would just call character stats. So you would then save the user's profile and the character stats. But I'm for the purpose of this video, because you could structure this however you like, I'm simply going to keep it like this. So these are the default values. Everything is set to zero. Let's save this guy. And then we are going to go back here and we're going to make ourselves a little widget. If we're in the top right corner here or top left, that will display that username, display that array of achievements that we have. And it will also display the level and profile picture. So let's do create widget here, user widget, and let's call this our user profile widget. So my designs aren't the most beautiful, but that doesn't really matter. So I'm going to drag this guy in here. And then I'm going to get ourselves a little border. Let's scale it up a little bit. Inside of the border, we are going to want a horizontal box. Let's do it like this. Then let's select the border. Let's color it, make it uh, something like this gray. And then inside of the horizontal box, we are going to put a little size box. We're going to make this size, let's do 60 by 60. So 60 by 60. Then what we want is that we want this border to fit to the size of the content. So now we can also reset these over here, these sizes. Then we see that with the horizontal box, we want to give it some extra panel. So something like five, nah, let's do more, something like 10, like this. Inside of this size box, we are going to do an image and this is going to be our profile picture. Profile picture underscore image. It needs to be a variable type. By default, we could say that we set it to one that could be the default profile picture for every gamer in that uses this game. Then we're going to put some text inside of the horizontal box next to the profile. We're going to select this size box of the profile picture and give it some padding to the right. So let's do something like a 10 padding. Looks nice. This right here is going to be our username. And we want to wrap it with let's say vertical box. I'm, I'm doing all of this here in runtime and just making something that kind of makes sense in my opinion. Let's make it size 18, the username. So we wrapped it with a vertical box. Now we're gonna put some extra text in here. We could say that this, we wanna wrap it with a horizontal box. And then we wanna make this size 16. No, it's too big, size 14. And this, we are going to call it my user level, let's just call it level, double point, and then this, and then we're going to copy paste some more text in here. And this is going to say like 15, for example, or first let's do level one. So we are level one. So this text needs to be variable because it's going to display our level. So we're going to say uh, user level text, make it a variable. This is the username text. So this also we're going to do user underscore username underscore text. Let's make that a variable too. We promoted the picture already to a variable. And then we want to display perhaps uh, our achievements. So let's try that. Let's put that to the right of it. So next to this one, we're going to duplicate the vertical box just like this. Then we're going to give this one some padding to the right. So let's give it 10 padding. And then here we're going to say achievements and then we are simply going to uh, put our achievements here in like a vertical box that's what i 
think is nice. So we're going to find ourselves a vertical box, plop it in here and call this self achievement box, vertical box variable. And let's fill it in just like this. All right, so that's going to display our achievements. And then we need to obviously have a little widget that is going to be that achievement. So let's make another one and call it achieve user achievements. And this user achievements, it's simply going to be some text. So drag my text in here, make it uh, very small because we don't have a lot of space. So like eight. And this is going to be achievement name. It's going to be achievement name, achievement, achievement name text, promote that to a variable. When this little guy constructs, we want to set the text. So we're going to do set the text, boom, boom. And this we are going to promote to a variable and call this um, achievement name actually let's call it with renames right click rename achievement name this we want to expose on spawn just like this all right boom boom and then in here actually instead of doing a vertical box you know what let's let's replace it with a scroll box why not so scroll box boom so this is going to be filled and this is our achievements scroll box sp okay so in here i would be our achievements so something like this and then you would have another one like this and another one like this etc and then let's make sure that we wrap this with a size box perhaps so we're going to select the border we are going to right click it wrap it with a size box give it a maximum size of a height here so we're gonna make this one 80 exactly okay and now if we put children in here it will populate the scroll box so we can actually check that if we put in a user achievement here duplicate it duplicate it look then you get your little scroll box so here we can see our achievements okay this is great compile and save so this widget will need to read from a save file and then uh populate itself with the information from the save file so first of all let's select it put it neatly in the corner here give it some padding just like that all right that's great and now we need to make sure that when we hit play that it's added here to the viewport so for that we're going to go back into our hood class and the first one that we want to actually put on the screen is going to be could I combine these guys? Could I put these guys in the same widget here? Yeah, I could. Okay, so I'm going to make a wrapper widget. I call this widget blueprint hood. And the hood is what I want to put on the screen. So if we go back to our hood class, we did this in video part one. Instead of making the profile picture panel here, we want to show the hood panel. So promote this to a variable, call it widget blueprint hood. This guy is what we want to add to the screen. This guy is what we want to focus our input on. And then inside of our widgets, we are going to go to the profile panel. We're going to replace this uh, canvas panel with this border panel. First, we're going to wrap this border panel with a size box. And then we're just going to give it a static width of um, 418 and a height of 480 then we're gonna say wrap to size boom boom all right and then we're gonna replace the canvas panel with the child so this is now the widget if we then click on desired this is that widget file and save and then we're going to do the same for the user profile widget so this one we're gonna replace it with a child and then we're gonna click on desired to see the actual size of it and then we're going to go to our widget blueprint hood, draw in our canvas panel here, and then we're going to draw in the two widgets. So widget blueprint user profile, we want this guy to size to the content be in the top left corner, 50 and 50 padding. And then we want our profile picture panel to be sized to the content. We want it in the middle of the screen, but then a little bit to the left. 
a little bit more. Let's do minus uh, 400. Okay, and then right now, if we hit play, boom, that works. And now let's make sure this actually displays the data of the user. So for that, we are going to make ourselves a little function library and put that stuff inside of there. So blueprint function library, let's call it BFL, blueprint function library, and let's call it general. It's just a general function library. And over here, we are going to do save user profile, and we are going to make a function called load user profile. Now, if you don't know what a function library is, I made a whole tutorial on it. So go check that out. I'll put a link in the description. But essentially, it's just uh, instead of coding your functions inside of specific classes or inside of specific widgets, we just have a library so that we can use these functions throughout our entire project. And the reason I'm doing that is because we want this um, uh, we want this user profile to independently load the data. But then yet again, we also want these items when we click them to save the data. And we want this profile picture panel here to also load data of the profile pictures that we perhaps own. So because we're going to be reusing these functions, I am not going to code them specifically inside of these widgets, but I'm going to be putting that inside of this uh, function libraries that I can call this throughout my entire project essentially. So the first thing that we want to do is that from the, that we want to load this save game data here and we want to load it inside of this user profile widget. So we have so many widgets open. Let's close them all and then only open this guy and then go to the event graph. So here on event constructs, we basically want to do load user profile. And then once this loads, we wanted to pass in some data and then we wanted to set all of these, all of these elements here, right? So the first thing that we want to do is that we want to set the profile picture. So let's get this out of the way for now, because we're going to have to code that functionality. So the profile picture, we want to set texture from brush, just like this. And then we want to match it to the size. Then we want to have our username. We're going to do set text. We want to set the user's username. Then we want to set the user's level. So that's this variable. So we're going to copy the set text. And we're going to plug this one in like that. And then we want to populate all of the achievements that the user has. So we're going to get this guy and we're going to first of all clear him. And then once we cleared it, we have to add the children. So we're going to add child. And this will be used in a little bit because the children that we're going to add, we're probably going to, well, we are going to for each loop. And we're going to for each loop through that array from the save game file that contains all of those achievements that we have. And over each achievement that we have, we're going to basically create a widget. Now the widget that we are going to be creating here, so we can already do that is going to be that achievement widget over here. And this is going to be added as a child to this achievement here. And this can have the owning player it doesn't need it, but we can do it. So it's going to be looking like this. And the data that comes out of here is going to go in here. We can already do it just like this. Um, but I'll do that in a little bit because that was of the string type and then the string type is going to go in there. So now let's make that function so that we can call it. So inside of here, we are going to do load user profile. So the way to do that is we have to do does save game exist. Now we have to give this a slot name. So let's call this the slot name user profile. Now, if the user profile exists, that's great then we are going to load it. So then we're going to do load, save, load game from slot. So if this is true, we want to load a game from a slot and the slot is user profile. And then what we get out of here is a save game object reference. Uh, and that's what we are going to cast to our save game. So over here we have our save game called BPSG user profile. And that BPSG user profile contains this user profile structure that contains the data of our user profile. So right now we're going to cast to BPSG user profile. And from here, we are going to get our user profile structure. And that's what we want this function to return. So when we're going to click this, click on outputs, 
go all the way to the end here. And then first of all, we're going to say, was it a success? Success. Well, in this case that we go off of that it exists and that we load it and that the cast doesn't fill, then it's a success. And then what we want to return on the success is the user profile data. And then we can also have the scenario where it's not a success. And that's for example, when this cast fills, that means we do not have a successful cast to get the profile picture or when the save file simply doesn't exist. In that scenario, we also don't have success. And now this function called load user profile, we can now literally go to this user profile widget here, and then we can actually call it. So you can type in load user profile, and there you go. Out of here, we can then break it and all the data will get out of here. Uh, and this is, uh, it has an execution pin in and out, but you don't really need that. You could make this even more neat because what you could do is that over in the blueprint function library, you could click on the function and even convert this to a pure. And now if we go back into the user profile widget, we can then do load user profile and just directly get the data out of here that we are looking for. So first of all, when we construct this widget, we are going to check, do we have a user profile? If we do, we want to set up all of these guys to do their job right so uh, the data that we want to use comes out of here so first of all the profile picture is going to go into the profile picture the username is going to go inside of here the user level is going to go inside of the user level text and then the achievements they go inside of here and for all of the achievements we're going to add them add a widget over here and show them in the viewport and make sure you clear the achievements box right before you do this. And then we're going to say, okay, this is done. So now you could select all of this and you could call compile it to a nice function and call it setup or let's call it update widget. Update the widget. And what this does is all of this. And now if I hit compile save, that error is fixed. And there you go. So this updates the user widget. Ta -da. So right now, if we're going to hit play, it's going to return that we do not have any of this data because we don't have a save file yet. Now, how does a save file work? Well, you can go here to your project folder. This is my project folder for this tutorial. And then you can go inside of saved and then you can go into side of a folder called save games, which currently does not exist because we have not made our first save game yet. Um, so let me show you this in a little bit. Okay, so now that we can uh, basically have a function to load the user profile, we need a function to save the user profile for when we click on these profile pictures and click save. So first of all, we're going to go and create that right now. So we have to add some stuff here to the profile picture panel. Stuff that we need to add here is a button that we can click to save things. So we're going to have this button here in the bottom. And we're going to call this save game button. Let's put some text on it and call this save profile. Just like that. And we also want to have an input box where we can set the username for this guy. So let's get ourselves a little input box. Uh, they are over here, input. And then we need a text box. So let's put the text box here. And then we're going to put this up a little bit, just like that. Let's wrap it with a size box and let's make it um, 50 high or sorry, let's make it uh, 200 width and 50 high. Oh, not 550, just like this. And then if you click on the left here, it will be there. And this editable text box is going to be our username text box. Um, and the font in here doesn't have a font selected apparently. So what we're going to do is click on this wheel, click on engine content, select Roboto engine font. Then we're going to go click on this wheel again, disable show engine content again. Uh, and then we want this font to be uh, visible. So let's make it all white. Just like that. And then we want to have some hint text. So this is going to be username. And if we hit compile and save, you see username there very fakely. 
And that's because of this uh, foreground color. So maybe we need to make this a different color. Let's make it black. Does that work? Yeah, this can be black as well. The focused color. So the focused color is black, foreground color is black. And then this is the background color. It's white. So this is our hint text. Let's make the font a little bit bigger because it's very tiny right now. So like this username. Okay, so now what we're going to do is that the user can put their username in here, they can click on the profile picture, and then they can hit save, and then we want to save the profile. So off of this save profile button here, we're going to go to the unclicked event. Um, and then what we are going to do is that when we click it, we want to get the data that is inside of this input box, this text box. So we're going to select that text box like this. So we're going to drag off of this text box and we're going to do get text and then this one. So this is the text that is currently inside of it. And that's what we want to save as the username. And then we can also select, we can also select one of these profile pictures. And then we basically want to give that profile picture information to this widget so that we can save the profile picture ID as well. So how are we going to go about this? Well, first of all, we're going to have to have this button inside of the individual profile pictures, send the data through to that parent widget. So what we are going to do is we're going to make a variable in here and call this parent widget. And the parent widget for the profile picture is the widget blueprint profile picture panel. So we're going to type in as a type here, profile pick panel this one and this is going to be the object and we want to expose it on spawn and do this so compile and save and then what we do inside of this profile picture panel here is that once we create these profile picture buttons here these children we want to give that parent widget and that's our self we're going to type self so now basically what we did is that this parent will create all of these uh, buttons here for profile pictures and the profile pictures individually will now know uh, who their parent is so that when we click this button, we can have this little widget now communicate with their parent widget. And then what we want to do with that parent widget is update basically which profile picture we have currently selected. So we want to send this profile picture data to the parent widget. So to do that, we are going to make an event here inside of the parent widget, which we're going to call update profile pick. So let's do custom event and we're going to say update um, selected profile picture. And then we're going to make an input and that input is going to be of the type S underscore profile pick, just like this. And then we're going to call this selected pick. So here comes our selected picture and here we are going to store this as a variable because this is the picture that the user wants to set as his new profile picture. And then over here, back inside of the children widget, we are going to then call that event. So we're going to do update selected profile picture and we want to update it with this data of the profile picture. And that's the data that we basically gave to this child when we created the child like this and this came out of this data table so now this is set and then we basically want to save it so here we are going to call then save uh, user profile and now we are going to have to code this function here so let's go back to our function library and then code our save user profile so the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a save game object and it's going to be of the save game type that we made so blueprint save game user profile then we want to promote this variable to a local variable and call it save game object and on this object we are going to write our data for the save game so the way that we're going to do that is that we're going to basically drag off of here and we're going to do set user profile and then we get this variable here and then the way that we want to set this user profile is that this is basically going to go into here because this is the data that we want to save inside of the user profile, just like this. And then once we did that, we are going to call save game to slot. And the slot is the same that we're going to load it from. So that's our user profile slot over here. 
So we're going to go here, save that. And the save game object is going to be this object that we just created. So we can drag it here from the local variables, just like this. Then we're going to check if it was a success or not. And then we can have a return. So if we click on here, we can have an output. Let's drag this all the way to the right. And then we can basically just plug it in like this and we can say success, whether we saved it successfully or not, we can basically return that. Okay. So this widget, we don't, uh, so this function, we do not want to convert it to a pure function because we want to actually send data through it and we want this to execute like this. So what do we do? We input some user profile data. We then basically set that on a local variable of a save game object from the type of our save game. And then we're going to save that to this slot and return whether or not it was successfully saved. So right now, if we go back to our profile picture panel, this panel, we can now hit the graph, see our updated uh, function here, and it will say success or not. So let's go ahead and let's print whether or not it was success or no, we're going to do a print string. And then we can uh, put this to 15 seconds and then we're going to append the string and we're going to say save success question mark enter enter and then we're going to put in the boolean to see if we successfully saved or not and of course we want to just save this so what are we putting in here well let's break the user profile structure we only want to set in this structure the username. So the username is going to come out of here, just like this. And we want to save our profile picture and we do not want to save the user level or the user achievements. So this is that profile picture data. So we can basically break this just like this. And then we can plug in the user profile picture data, but we do not want to override our user level or user achievements. So the way that we can better do this without overwriting our level or our achievements is that we basically just want to set. So if you type in set members and the members that we want to set in here are basically, um, if we go here to the default categories are our username and our profile picture. This is the only data that we actually want to set in here. So this is asking for a structure reference and a struct out. So the way that we're going to do this is that we're going to do load user profile. And then here we're going to plug our user profile in as the structure reference. And now we're going to say the button in here. So this is the user profile name that we want to update. This is the picture that we want to update. And then out here comes the data that we basically want to save. So this is what we're going to make it look like. Then we're going to compile and save and we are going to hit play. So right now I can, uh, I can type in the username box. I can type ha 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 ha. And then I can click on my glasses here. So I clicked on it and then I can hit save. And now it printed save success true. So because it is now save success and true, the next time we play this widget over here is going to load that save file that exists and it's going to display that information. So if I hit escape right now, the first thing I want to show you is that inside of your project folder, if you go now to saved, you will see save games. And here is that actual save file. So this file, this dot save file contains your save file in here, basically, uh, with this structured information in there. So all this user profile structured information. And then, like I said, if I click play right now, then our user profile widget. So this guy is going to attempt to on event construct to update the widget, which will load it. And now that we successfully have a save file, it can then set our username and our profile picture. So right now, if we hit play, we see that we are the blue picture that I selected and that our name is ha ha ha. And our level is still zero and we don't have any achievements, <laughs> but that's fine. So we now see that this saving system works. So I can select a profile picture like this green one. I can set my name to be a PVP boss and I got this green profile picture and I can hit save and it saved successfully. Now, if you close and hit play again, we see that it worked.
But now, of course, you want this to update in real time. So let's try to do that. So, so essentially what we want to happen is that if we are inside of this widget blueprint profile picture panel and we hit save, we want it to then update this widget blueprint user profile. And we wanted to call this function again so that it will load from the save file again. So it is very easy to achieve. When we click the save profile button, uh, and when it is successfully saved, then we are simply going to call something called um, get all widgets of class. And the widgets of class that we want to update, because you might have multiple of these widgets, doesn't really matter. But the widget that we want to update is our uh, user profile widget. And for each of these, so for each of the user profile widgets that we find, uh, we are going to say update widget, just like this. So if you have multiple user profile widgets, let's say you have some in your inventory where you show the username and some on your mini map or in the top left corner of your game, then you can just call this and then make sure that top level only is ticked off because otherwise it will only uh, update the widgets that are directly in the viewport. Let's say you have some widgets that are toggled away or invisible, then it will skip those. So let's turn that off. So right now, if I hit compile, save and play, I can select the orange picture and call myself ha 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 and then hit save and then you'll see it update here in real time. Okay, now that we got this out of the way, we can then finally get into giving ourselves a level and some achievements and then we can make what this video is all about, that this picture is either grayed out when we do not meet the requirement of the level and that this picture is grayed out if we do not meet the requirement of this achievement. So let's do, go and do that. So first of all, let's get rid of this print string because we do not need it anymore. And we can say we only want to update the widget when we successfully saved. So let's put a nice branch in here. If we successfully saved, we want to update all user profile widgets. All right, compile save. Let's close all of these panels. Hit save all real quick. Okay. So, well, as we see, we have a save game and inside of the save game, we can simply have a level. So what I'm going to do as a quick cheat, because uh, obviously we're not going to be leveling up in this game right now. So I'm just simply going to hard code a level in here. So let's say I'm level 12. And then I'm also going to hard code some achievements that I have. So this is a bit of a cheat, but obviously you're going to have to make your own version of being able to become level 15 or something. So if we go to data and then inside of data achievements, we are going to say that we have achievement one and two. So we got fly high and we got 500 meter dash. So let's basically go back into the save game now and then add ID number one and ID number two for the achievements that we have. And that number one and two, that is this ID over here. And then we are going to take a quick look again inside of the user profile widget because we want this panel to populate with that data from the achievements. So let's see if we properly set that up. So right now what it's going to do is it's simply going to uh, get the user achievement. So this is going to return number one and two, and then it's just going to uh, show one and two. So that's not what we want to do because look, if I hit play, it's going to say one, two, <laughs> but what we wanted to do is display the actual achievement here based on our data table. So we want to display the name. That's enough for this example. If you have an actual overview of a lot of achievements with cool pictures and descriptions and everything attached to it, then you can obviously make it look nicer. So what we are going to do is these IDs, we're going to try to find them inside of that data table of the achievements. So we're going to do get data table row, this one. And then the data table is our achievements data table. And then we're going to hook this one up to the loop and we're going to go in here. So we want to find the ID one and the ID two. And then out of here will come our achievement information. And what we want to show here is just the name of the achievement. And right now, after this little piece of code, if we hit play, then we see that we have the fly high and the 500 meter dash achievement. So what I want to do right now is that as we see this profile picture is required level 15 to display it. 
And this picture requires the festive achievement in order to display it or to unlock it. So the way to do that is that, um, first of all, let's make ourselves level 15. So back in our save file, we're going to say we are currently level 15. But we do not have the, not, uh, the ID number 3 achievement, which is our festive achievement. So we do not have that one. So we are level 15. So let's make sure that if we are level 15, that this profile picture is unlocked for us. But let's make sure that this one is not unlocked because we do not meet that requirement. So how are we going to do this? We are going to go inside of these items. So inside of the actual profile picture item, we're going to go to the graph. And then when we construct this widget, we want this widget to essentially check if we do or do not have this unlocked. So you could do this in two ways. You could either have this specific widget check whether or not it is unlocked for this user, or you could also have the parent panel. So this panel, which populates this box anyways, you could also have this parent panel check whether or not you meet the requirements before it even displays the widgets, if that makes sense to you guys. So the way that we are going to do it right now is that we are going to have, let's see, let's have the parent widget do it because otherwise every individual profile picture is gonna have to pull the save file. So to prevent that, we're gonna code it inside of here and have this guy pull the user profile once. So here we already have our little custom function, load user profile. And then out of here, we're going to break it and we're going to get that user level. Uh, and then we're going to see if we, we are going to meet the requirements of these profile pictures. So essentially what we're going to do is that for each profile picture that we find, we're going to break the information and we're going to see here that it has a required level. So let's see if our level is equal to the required level. If it is equal to the required level, then we can say uh, that this one is unlocked. Small little improvement here, guys. Um, this is actually wrong. If we do is, this is win from the future. Because right now we are going to say when our level is equal to the required level, then we unlock it. But it's not required that our level is equal. Because then let's say that you're level 16, you already passed 15. Then obviously you should have unlocked this picture. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to check if our level is uh, equal or higher than the required level. And if that is true, then we unlock it. So it needs to be like this basically. So we could just basically, when it is true, we could display it. And if it is false, then we can simply not include it in the list at all. So you could simply not show it here at all. But that's not what we want to do. We want to create it out and not be able to click it for this example. So what we're going to do is go into the profile picture widget. So this little guy, and we're going to say here is required level of, or is unlocked basically. So we're going to say, yeah, is unlocked question mark. And this variable, we're going to make it instance editable. And we're going to say expose on spawn. Now we're going to compile save, go back to the parent widget. So this guy, and then we're going to say, well, uh, we're going to first of all, refresh this so that it shows up here. And then we're going to say, if our level is equal to that required level, then we are going to say, okay, it's unlocked. But first of all, we installed something that if the required level is minus one, that it is unlocked by default. So what we need to do is that first we have to check if this is equal to minus one. If that's true, it means that there is no required level for this guy. And then we're also going to do the same here. So here we're also going to do is, and then we're going to see. So here we're also going to do uh, this one to the integer. And we're going to see is this integer equal, is this string equal to minus one? Well, when it's this one, or when it is this one, then we are going to say uh, that unlocked is true. So we're going to say unlocked is true, basically, right? Or we're going to say whatever this returns. So this is going to return true. And then we're going to say unlocked. So that's great. Um, and then we can also say, if this one is false, we can check if we are the level or not. And if this one is false, we can also check if we have the achievement or not. Let's promote these two functions so that we can work with some local variables. So let's call this populate profile 
pictures, populate profile pictures. And then inside of here, we want to basically run our logic, right? To populate these profile pictures. So that's this, that's detach that wire that just popped up. And then what we're going to promote to local variable is, is it unlocked or not? So promote to local variable and call is unlocked question mark because that's what we want to set. Okay, so we just promoted this to variable. And then what we're going to say is in the scenario that required level is minus one and achievements is minus one. So this needs to be changed to an end. In this scenario, we are going to say that unlocked variable equals true. <laughs> so then we have basically uh, unlocked this profile picture. And then we can just go straight in and say, okay, we unlocked the profile picture because it does not have any requirements to it. Because when we set this to minus one, it means that this profile picture does not have any requirements. That's how we decided to code this. Uh, but if that's not true, then we're going to have to check the following. Okay, so then first, what we're going to check is, is the required level not equal to minus one? So we're going to branch and we're going to say, is the required level for this profile picture not equal to minus one? If that returns true, then it means that there is a required level. And when there is a required level, then we are going to check if our level is equal to the required level. And this will then determine whether or not this is unlockable or not. So in this scenario that there is a required level, then we're going to say, okay, then we can determine if we have unlocked this by saying if our level is equal, if so if our level is equal to the required level, that will then do this. And then we can go in here as well. And then there's one last check. If this is uh, returns false, which means the required level is minus one, then we're going to say, then we have a required achievement ID. So in this scenario, the last scenario, we're going to check if we have the required achievement ID, if we contain it. So the way that we do that is that we're going to track off of this array and we're going to type in contains. And then what we're going to do is that we are going to check if our achievement list, so our user profile achievements if we contain this required achievement id for this picture and if this is true then we're gonna say okay then we unlocked it but if it is false then we can say then we did not unlock it so in this last scenario for false we can also simply remove the branch and simply put this one here uh, and then hook it up like this and then say, okay, then this determines it. So now that this uh, code here is done, you guys can take a quick look at it. So it's just like this basically. And I'm also going to make this uh, project available on our Patreon so you can check it out there. And then you can also have access to it and basically just uh, look at the code directly if something was confusing for you. So yeah, but that, that works right now. So let's take one last look at our user profile. So we are going to say we have uh, one and two and we do not have level 15. Let's make ourselves level 12. Well, in this scenario, we're going to say that we do not meet the requirements for, let's get our profile pictures. We do not meet the requirements for profile picture uh, six because we are not level 15 and we do not meet the requirements for profile picture eight because we do not have required achievement ID three. Hello guys. Okay. So it's now actually a whim from the future here because my recording apparently cut out. So basically I made some additions to the project in the meantime, uh, and it's mostly just design changes and some extra features, but we can definitely continue the tutorial here. So the panel does look a little bit different. And if I press play, you're also going to see that there's some additional uh, functionality here, but I'll get into that in a little bit, but we can actually con just continue right now. So what we just coded is to code to basically be able to verify if we do or do not meet these requirements for these profile pictures. And then what we need to do right now is that we need to make sure that if we do not meet the requirements that these buttons are locked. So basically, since I am level 12, and since I do not have any achievements, this one over here that requires level 15, and this one that requires the festive achievement, they need to be locked. So let's get into doing that right now. So I'm going to hit stop. And then yeah, so we got all of this code in place right now. And then what we are going to do is inside of the profile picture widget, 
Go ahead and select this overlay and then drag yourself an image into there. So just like this, an image, and then call it something like not unlocked image. That's a good name. And what we want to do is that this image needs to be on the bottom of the overlay because it needs to overlay the rest of uh, the button that's in here and that profile picture image that's in here. And then go ahead and select your image and make sure that you open up the brush and then set this tint color to be something like a darker color, but give it some opacity. So an opacity of 0.8 makes it so that we can kind of see through it and it's kind of opacive. Uh, and then scroll down a little bit to your visibility category and set your visibility, which on default is set to visible, set it to collapsed by default. And what that means is that as soon as this widget appears, that one is essentially not there. And then our code is going to determine if we do or do not want to show this not unlocked image, which will basically feedback us that we do not have this button unlocked. So that's why we need to set it to collapse by default. Uh, and then we go here into the graph and then here we're going to do some setup. So what it looks like for you right now is that you have on event construct, you have is unlocked. And then when we go off of true, then we simply set up that button with the right information. Uh, but if we do not have the profile picture unlocked, then what we want to do is that we want to, like I said, make this not unlocked image visible. So the way to do that is to grab your not unlocked image variable right here. Make sure that you select your image and promote it to variable. And then we are going to drag off of it and type in set visibility. And then you get this node hook that up to the false. And then over here, instead of setting it to visible, set it to not hit testable self only, which makes it visible, but you cannot click it at that point. So you cannot click uh, this image because we do want to still be able to click the button. It still needs to behave like an actual button. But what we want to do is that we just want to ignore the button click is how I set it up right here. So uh, set it to not hit testable self only and then plug it back into this sequence that will then set up the whole profile picture with the correct information for us and with that tooltip. And then what we're going to do over here is on the unclicked event of the button. So this button event and then on the unclicked. Then we are simply also going to copy paste our is unlocked and only when it is unlocked we want to update that parent widget with that information from this profile picture. If this is not unlocked we simply want to ignore it. So then right now if we go ahead and hit play then we see that this picture is not unlocked because we are level 12 and this one is not unlocked as well because we do not have any achievements and this one which requires level 75 is not unlocked as well because we are level 12. And we are not a moderator, which is some extra logic that I added. But you can still hover over them and they still display your tooltip here. And then because we ignore the button click, we cannot click these. So nothing happens. So if I select the orange one as the last one and then select this one after and then hit save, then as you see, it did not save this one, but it saved our last selection, which is that orange one. So this works. Uh, and then let's make sure that we can actually unlock them. So we have to become, we have to meet these requirements. So let's make ourselves be level 15 and let's make ourselves have the festive achievement. So the way that you guys are going to do it is that you're going to go over to that save games save game over here and then a quick cheat way to do it if you don't have yourself set up a save file is that over here you can simply set your level so you could say that you're level 17 uh, and then you can also set yourself the achievement ids here so you can give yourself achievement id number three that's the one for the festive achievement if you look inside of the data table uh, but what i did over here in the Patreon project is that I set up this little widget over here. And what this widget does is that it simply sets these achievements inside of this save profile here. It saves them for us if we select them over here. So what we're going to do right now is that we are going to make ourselves level 17. So let's do it like this and hit save. So now we are level 17 and you see that this picture becomes unlocked. Then we can also give ourselves some achievements. So let's give ourselves achievement one. Then you still see, well, we get achievement one, but it's still not unlocked. Now, if we also give ourselves achievement three, you see that this one suddenly becomes unlocked. Now I can actually click it, hit save, and I got that unlocked profile picture. And this one requires level 75. So if we make ourselves level 100, hit save, this one then becomes unlocked, and I can then save it. 
Okay, and there you go, guys. That's basically how it's done. So that's how you can lock certain profile pictures uh, behind either a user level or behind a user achievement. If I tick off this achievement again, hit save, then you see that it becomes unavailable for me again. So yeah, that's it, guys. It's a fairly simple setup, but there was some, uh, some additional UI work that we had to do. That's why this is such a long video. In the next video, I'm going to cover what some of you asked me on Discord, which is how can you make profile pictures that are only available for moderators? So basically, uh, and moderators what i did for this setup is that they have an id and they are in an id data table so over here we have ourselves a little data table for whitelisted moderators and then in here we can specify a moderator so we can say this is his id and his name is freddy and here we have peter and these are the whitelisted moderators and then what we simply say uh, is that if we have a moderator ID equal to one of those IDs from the data table, so let's say this one is Peter, then I become a moderator and these become unlocked for me. And then what you guys ask is, how can you do this exact thing with, for example, uh, as a unique Steam ID? So how can you make sure that certain Steam IDs, which are the staff or are your admins, only have access to certain pictures? Well, that's what I'm going to cover in the next video. But essentially what it is, is that you have to uh, make sure that you whitelist there custom steam ids inside of your whitelisted moderator data table and then you're going to run some additional logic to check if the user meets that moderator id or not all right guys i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys in the next one bye bye